how are you? Hi, Do you want to just start the show? Yeah, let's just start. The Well, because I think, oh boy, where'd that go? Uh, I think it's interesting because I have not talked to you literally or, or audibly or textually in a long time, which brings us to, you know, Alex's apology alcove it, where I, you know, apparently muted like about half of my fairly important <laughs> text threads just a little and, bit like your mom and, uh, yeah my my mom my grandma which i don't feel too bad about because she like goes out and parties more than me and she's <laughs> the one who doesn't return my calls uh oh but, amazing uh, yeah yeah and and actually as uh, with my wife as well but we just happen to like see each other so much that like we didn't even like we have a ton of other ways of communicating um so it wasn't even i i have no idea and then so i blew you off like four times which is that's not common or uncommon for me but i feel like i stressed you out quite a bit because i just like ghosted on you text wise absolutely well and this is something we can get into a little bit later if you want, but like I just recently realized that I think I have postpartum anxiety. Um, oh, interesting! Me, like not in a good way. Yeah, no, <laughs> right? It's not a it's not a happy thing or anything. But like I, the last week or so, I have had more moments where all I want to do is run away and hide instead of like mm. talking to somebody about something or dealing with the situation or my normal reactions to things. Um, and so it, I'm wondering if this is what it is or if it's just, you know, a shitty week, which is also entirely possible. But so when you didn't reply, to multiple things I'm like oh great you know she's like doesn't want to do this anymore we just published all these episodes and now we're not going to have one for oh. Friday or she doesn't like me which oh and God. then I'd be like no that's stupid what are you talking about you're awesome but still like having these moments of uh, type of a thing which was not fun. I don't recommend it. Uh, no, it's horrible. And which is why I feel so bad. And there I've I'm currently repairing a lot of friendships right now in terms <laughs> of and, and the thing is I I know that you know and most of my friends know that I tend to I, I'm not good at responding to things anyway. Right. But this was like a prolonged situation for many people. Yeah. Um because I'm be, uh, that that's the thing I don't expect I still don't have any expectation that anybody wants to talk to me ever. So it still surprises me when people text <laughs> like b b little Alex would not think th that <laughs> she'd be getting text messages from nice people. So it's so ingrained in my brain not to think that anybody would just want to talk to me at all. Uh, so it, I, uh, wow. Wow. A lot, a lot to unpack on. Bo well, okay, enough about <laughs> me. <laughs> I didn't know that. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know that postpartum anxiety was. I do most people know that postpartum anxiety is a thing. I don't think so because I didn't know. And oh, wow. in fact, because you know, you hear about postpartum depression, you hear yeah. about those types of things and I was just I was talking to a fellow mom and I was just like man this last you know week or so I've just had this massive anxiety in multiple situations and I don't like I I've never had this before I've never experienced this before and I was just like I'm wondering if postpartum anxiety is a thing and apparently it is according to the internets so you know it must be true uh, <laughs> but it, it kind of makes sense because a lot of times when people are describing you know mental health things they will lump anxiety and depression together absolutely and there's a lot of medication that can work for both or if you have one and not the other the same medication could do it you know obviously depending on the person and and whatnot but like it makes sense that this could be a symptom but it just 
really affected not just like how I was reacting to you not replying to me, but also like, oh my gosh, should I just get a jobby job? Should I like, I'm not ever going to be successful. I'm not going to like do these things or who's going to want to talk to me. And just like, it just was this kind of avalanche that came in and just kicked my ass last week. And it was not fun at all. Do you, so do you not typically experience generalized anxiety? I, I guess because I just assume that the human state of mind <laughs> is constantly anxious <laughs> and miserable. So, and we've talked a little bit about depression, but I guess I don't see you necessarily as an anxious person. So is this new? It it was very new in a way. So a lot of times I'll, if I am anxious, it's, it's situational. So I'll be anxiety you know, anxious for a flight or trip or something coming on, but Mm -hmm. having just a general, Hey body, your mind is feeling anxious and no idea why, like that very, very rarely happens to me. And usually if it does happen, it is almost triggered by something else. So it's usually because I like haven't been doing there's been something on my to-do list for you know a month and I haven't gotten to it and I'm just trying to ignore it but it doesn't go away type of a like that kind of a trigger Mm -hmm. Um, so the fact that this was coming and it wasn't really I couldn't really point to why Right. It's just like, yeah. oh, that's interesting. That I mean, that is interesting that you talk specifically about the anxiety around getting a jobby job, because um, our conversation today was going to be and, and is going to be about creativity and stuff like that. So I'm also wondering, other than me being an asshat is was <laughs> and like, like you said, this this sounds very much like um generalized anxiety that could be like associated with um postpartum anxiety but do do you not get anxious about creative projects then because you just had this like you showed me one photo of uh a shoot you did this weekend right yeah yeah it was gorgeous oh my gosh thank you it was well worth getting up at 5 a.m for let me just put (laughs) that out there um so when i have creative projects especially something that's for me so these three girls and i'll include the picture in the show notes for anyone that's interested whatever but um these three girls i've been photographing for about two years now um they are on the local high school dance team and they are instructors for my daughter's dance studio and so I've gotten to know two of them very well and the third one um, just arrived for this shoot because they're all seniors this year Um, and they were like we want to do pictures with all three of us and they're kind of my senior like uh, ambassador type things I don't shoot I don't photograph a lot um, because my prices are high enough to wear if I like, I, I don't want to shoot a lot basically. Right. Um, mm-hmm. cause it's, it's a lot of physical work. It's a lot of all of that, but I do enjoy shooting people that I want to shoot with a camera, not a gun. Just putting that out there. <laughs> it's so dude. It's, I know it's so, it's so hard, especially because filming isn't a thing to say. It's like, Oh yeah, I'm out shooting right now. I'm yeah. like, oh, good. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. yeah. Awkward. So, uh, when we say shoot, we mean with a camera. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I don't do a lot of shoots and when I do they're usually for me um and so when the girls were like hey would you be willing to do this because they let me just kind of do whatever I want with them so it, it's a mutually beneficial agreement in that way so I don't receive monetary compensation but I get to have these absolutely gorgeous photos um and so because I've worked with them before um and because I know I know my camera inside and out. I know. Wait, 
people are gonna people are gonna ask what camera <laughs> it's a nikon uh d610 i tend to use um the 85 millimeter 1.4 a lot um or the 24 to 70 1.8 i think i think it is um hot yeah totally sexy <laughs> sexy lens man that 85 the bokeh uh it's like butter. <laughs> Use the the right term for it. Not the right term. Oh God, I'm... the appropriate oh. pronunciation. Uh, no, no. Well, I that's I just say um, shallow depth of field oh, because gotcha. I'm, I'm I'm a basic bitch. Um. Yeah, <laughs> or you could say a wide aperture. You know, <laughs> there's a variety of ways and there is no right or wrong. You can call it whatever the fuck you want to call it. And it works and it's great. Like, That's correct. That's yeah. correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I mean, I've been photographing for like nine years and I am proud of my posing ability and I'm proud of making my clients comfortable and all of this stuff. So I don't really have the anxiety over that type of thing. The only time I do get anxious is if I am filming my daughter's uh, dance studio recitals because I'm not as comfortable with the video side of things as I am with the still photography. But that's also usually because my daughter's excited and all of the nerves. And it's, it's like when you photograph a wedding, you get one chance. Oh, I can't even imagine. Yeah. I, oh. I, uh, I've done... I've done a handful of weddings, usually locations because that I want to go to. So like I photographed a wedding in Yosemite, which was incredible. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. It was so cool. And we did a next day session. Um, So we had the wedding, the ceremony, reception, et cetera, et cetera. Um, And then the next day we went into Yosemite Park itself and did the two of them. And they, because they're big hikers, so they wore their hiking boots with their wedding gear. And it was uh, just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. We stayed there through the magic hour and at sunset and just got some of my favorite shoot pictures ever. It was breathtaking um and so like it it usually is i am i i call i would call myself a photographer because yes i am a professional photographer i will take money for photo work but i don't market myself a whole heck of a lot because i don't want to do it a whole lot because it still ends up being a very creative outlet i am kind of shocked that I mean, I'm not shocked because you're an ambitious and courageous person, but like photographing weddings <laughs> and like one, uh, once in a, it, it's not like you're, uh, oh my God, like yeah. my brain is just short circuiting and <laughs> like that's just a rational thing to get anxious about. Like that, that yeah. shouldn't even count as anxiety. That's just, uh, you, oh my gosh. Uh, why? Well, like what do, uh, what draws you to that creatively because it's kind of a high pressure situation like you, you do photography and podcasts and consulting and basically all creative work <laughs> yeah a lot of it is creative uh with with weddings particularly there's that high of performing um i love performance i love i mean i'm excited huh to audition for a couple shows at my local theater again this year it's been so last fall um i was a stage manager for our local production of peter and the star catcher um and the fall and the spring before that um i was did a role in um uh the importance of being earnest which is one of my all-time favorite books Same. ever it's so good oh, it's so, so funny good. so funny but i love i think that's partially my extrovertedness um i love performing i love performance um and when i do agree to take a wedding um it, there's it has to be the right kind of bride and groom <laughs> And the same for like events. I have to 
because I um, I photograph a convention in Atlanta called Jordan Con, which is um, created by fans of the Wheel of Time series, which um, that book series is how my husband and I met and where my daughter's name is from. And so... Mm-hmm. I'm on, um, I'm also like webmaster for them, et cetera, et cetera. But like I photographed that event too. And so I donate my services for them because I want to contribute. And it's a great way to get to yell and be bossy at people, <laughs> <laughs> which I greatly, greatly enjoy. <laughs> So it's a little bit of like, I, 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 I will only work with people that I want to work with. Um, and I will only work with the people that are willing to give me not necessarily just the creative freedom, because obviously it's your wedding. I want you to enjoy and have everything that you want to know, like want it to be. But you also like, if I say I need 45 minutes for portraits, well then by golly we're gonna have those portraits like we need that time because if you want if you have a family of 18 people on each side with multiple children and generations and stuff you can't get that done in 10 minutes like it's just not possible but we'll go in and we'll get it done as fast as possible and boom you're good i i photographed uh, one of my brother's close friends and i mean they're my friends too but um It had been rainy all morning and the ceremony was clear and beautiful. And then for the reception, which thankfully was indoors, it started raining again. And so we're like, okay, you know, we'll take pictures inside, yada, yada. Well, it cleared for like 10 minutes like before they were doing the cake cutting and I was like quick let's run and so we got some fun (laughs) pictures like outside with the stormy clouds but it was still dry and just like it was super fun and because they trusted me they got these great pictures and I feel like it's kind of I I kind of use this in all of my situations that I only want to work with people that trust me to do what I say I'm going to do And of course, Mm -hmm. I will, if I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And it's the same thing with my unicorning. It's the same thing with acting, with stage managing, with podcasting, with whatever. There has to be that inherent level of trust. And I love being able to be trusted to create something pretty awesome. Do you find that it needs to be both ways like are you able to work with people that you can't necessarily trust not as easily um and usually will end up like moving along in that relationship if that makes sense um if i don't feel like it's resi- like if it's not a reciprocal trust then the they can't trust me as much because they aren't giving back to that Mm -hmm. if that makes sense yeah it does how do you think that you build up that trust in such a I guess a a short amount of time like I I'm in charge of a lot of projects um where I have a team for a day or sometimes less like I'm only recently starting to you know uh, hire and um, have folks work for me for like months at a time and usually it's like um, a intern or like vendors or freelancers but I guess I'm interested how you establish that trust with people because I don't necessarily think that I don't have that, but it's not something I guess I, I, this is so selfish. I think of, about it in the opposite way of where I'm, when I try to hire someone, it's very much like, okay, can I trust this person? Are they reliable? And are they going to be okay with like, when I'm in the position of power, right. like you, they need to be reliable for me because I'm going to be running around all like, and, and I guess it's a, maybe a bad habit that I've picked <laughs> up from past, uh, bosses. Um, 
And I, I, I'm just sort of curious is how you do that. It's, it's definitely difficult for sure. Um, especially I, is, when I'm onboarding a new unicorn client, mm-hmm. um, I have that initial consultation where basically I, I have to talk to somebody in, you know, half an hour and make sure that they trust that I can do what I say I can do um, for their business because their business is their baby. This is, you know, they they need help. How can they trust somebody, some stranger? Most of the time, this is the first time that they've hired this type of help or any help at all. Um, and it comes down to making sure that I am letting them know that I trust them. So when I'm first talking with somebody, have I... I I mean, I have, obviously, I have borders and guidelines on around myself, but I am open and willing to trust until you screw me over. Now, yes, this has bitten me in the ass in the past, um, but it's also helped grow these relationships really quickly. Um, So I will trust you until I can't trust you anymore. That sounds... Not good. <laughs> that sounds like something I would do. What's <laughs> happening? I, 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 I guess, or maybe no. Maybe that's it, it, it's it's just me, and maybe because I've always had to be so guarded with myself. Like I'm, I'm very open on the internet about uh, things that most people would consider private, like my relationship or sexuality or um, especially, you know, mental illness and stuff like that. But I, I don't know. Sometimes I just really don't want to talk about like what my favorite movie or song is. <laughs> like, like you walk into a party and this is my favorite story that someone uh, told me that I think about, I might've even talked about it on this show, but um like she w- she was talking to a guy and he was like, so uh, what book are you reading lately? And she just said, oh, I'm kind of in between books right now. <laughs> and he was just like, oh, you don't read? And it's like, what the fuck is that? And, I, uh, you know, we probably even talked about this in our book episode, but it's I I don't like people making like those. It sounds so shallow, shallow, but those choices feel so much more personal to me. Yeah. Whereas, like, I can't help that I'm a big, crazy queero. Um, and I use, I, I am trying not to use crazy in the pejorative, and I'm trying to, to uh, you, you know, yeah. sorry. I, I, I like to use my words, and, and that's in another thing that people, I don't know. Man, now I'm getting into, like, when it bites you in the ass, like, how how do you know that point of when it's, like, bitten you in the ass too much? It sounds like you let it, like, this, the the not trust monster bite you multiple times, and then you have a cutoff point. But where's the cutoff point? It, it, if it affects my real life, if it affects my income, and if it affects the job that I'm doing, that's the cutoff. But... What does real life mean? Like family? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. So I'm, for example, um, all the clients I was working with when I was pregnant knew that I was pregnant. Right. They knew that mm-hmm. I was a surrogate. They knew and we were planning for when I was going to give birth. Like mm-hmm. that's not something that I personally would keep private, but I know that there are definitely some coaches some people that are working that will keep that as private as possible um because they don't want it to affect whatever which is 100 percent totally fine that's not how i work um everyone that i work with Mm -hmm. knows that my husband had a stroke they Mm -hmm. know that if he has to go to the hospital i'm taking him screw whatever else is going Mm -hmm. on but i will have my computer because hospitals have internet and I can do whatever I need to do. Well, some do. Well, <laughs> let me Sorry. rephrase. We, we should have a talk about that sometime. <laughs> that would be Us. really good. Uh, <laughs> yes. Because I, let me rephrase that in that all of the hospitals in the greater Portland area that 
we have attended in the last almost eight years now have internet. I'm going to just say, though, God bless nurses who are willing to tell you what the good password is or know where an Ethernet jack is. Nice. Oh, my God. Like, uh, I, I'm i sure that you've spent more time in the hospital than I have, although I might be catching <laughs> up to you. <laughs> and, uh, because, and I've been on, you know, both ends as a patient as, and a caregiver and just the, there's always and, and it's typically um, younger nurses who are like I, I got gotcha. you. Not, not I don't want to be like ageist or anything, but they like they just, understand uh, the the need yeah. for the internet. Yeah. Um. In the past year or so, I have gotten just a hotspot, um, which has just been very beneficial. So I don't have to worry about the Wi-Fi, uh, especially when dealing with encryption and hacking and all of that scary tin hat stuff. Um, so I tend to use that, especially for hospitals. Um, I totally forgot where we were talking. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's, 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 it's my fault. Like, what, so if, you know, if your husband has to go to the hospital and most of your clients know that, have you ever gotten any blowback, like mid, like you've taken on a client um, or, or they've hired you and things just implode? I had that happen in the, actually about six months after his stroke um i hadn't developed my boundaries my proper like right. these are the mm -hmm. rules and this is my business and that sort of thing and i let one of my clients then kind of guilt me into the fact that i wasn't able to do something um on the timeline that she wanted um and at that that was kind of the downhill trajectory towards our relationship ending uh in that sense um but really for the most part i don't get hired by people that aren't awesome like i can usually get get a vibe from people when i have that introduction uh whether i want to work with someone or not how i mean that's magic a <laughs> <laughs> if i could bottle it up we would i i don't i don't i i don't know uh but it's the same thing with like my real life relationships as well and people that i am friends with or not friends with i'm okay like okay for my own mental health I will hang out like I, you'll be an acquaintance, but not a friend type of a thing. Whereas if we meet at a, you know, at the farmer's market or at the grocery store, of course, I'm going to talk to you and like not hide, but I'm not going to invite you over to my house for tea. And I will hide and never <laughs> want to talk. And I, that's, uh, I, I I mean I, I like how do you that's that's an interesting thing is having acquaintances versus friends that I also think we should talk about at some point because I w often want to keep people as acquaintances uh, and they want to be friends and then I need to just burn the bridge. Not, not you. I, well, I would perhaps ghost, not ghost, not, you know, <laughs> mute, mute their text chain, mm -hmm. but, uh, usually it's kind of a, a series of soft no's when asking to work on a project, um, a project or something. And I mean, we had this conversation with Stephen Hackett at like the beginning of the yeah. year of the only things I want to do this year are, are like a hard hard hell yes of I very very much want to put my time and energy into this um but it, it like you can let it it feels like you can let so many people into your life while still keeping you know the the core family unit like you still have them as the priority yeah and I, I that's that's also something I've always really really admired about you like being able to be public about that but still you know keeping the family unit intact at the core I'm trying to make a cool metaphor but I don't know <laughs> I, I'm I'm losing the thread <laughs> but, but whereas I uh 
I think I shut down too. I, sometimes I batten the hatches a little too hard, and I wonder if that's because I. I don't know. I guess it's fear. How do you get over like that fear? Uh, you don't. Um, but I also <laughs> on like the flip side. I don't know if I have like someone that I could point to and say this is my best friend. I mean, other than my husband, but he doesn't count. But, but but yeah, it does though. I think. Well, I don't know because that's an interesting. I feel like adults. I have like a lot of best friends in different like facet. I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, like that was a very big thing as a kid. Of like, if you don't have, it was it was almost like pre boyfriend or girlfriend. Like if you're not, if you don't have a best friend, like ugh, man, you're just a loser. Like right. oh, you're not dating anybody. Ugh lame yeah um <laughs> woo, don't know where that came from <laughs> but like i i always never expected to get married because um i was very i never really liked the people i dated um and then very i you know ended up dating my best friend and then it you know uh and now they're yeah. uh d- g- working on another podcast that <laughs> we're uh doing like two studios down from me that's not, i'm not like in a studio <laughs> fortress i mean they're anyway uh but yeah if like <laughs> i hadn't i never exp- so yeah maddie is my best friend and you, I feel like you were saying like you can't really point to anybody as your best friend is a bad thing, and I don't know if that's the case. I, it's it's hard. So, for example, I will. I've planned a lot of birthday parties for for people, or I'll go out of my way to do surprises for things. I've never had anyone plan a birthday party for my for me. What? Which. Is, is, I mean, obviously, other than, like, parents and things, but, like, I've always done the planning. Um, And so, like, this year, I didn't really do anything because I was just, well, I was pregnant and I was just too tired. And so nothing really happened for my birthday, which, totally fine. But it was also just like, huh, maybe if I had a best friend, they would have planned something. You know, like, and I don't want this to be a sympathy thing by any means. I totally well, too fine late. with it. No, <laughs> <damn> it. But <laughs> it's, I think there's a difference, though, between sympathy and pity. Because it's not like I'm, like, pitying you. But yeah. I think what I, like, I know what you mean. And I see this happen to other people is that people see you as the planner and the caregiver of everybody. And then it's like, well you know we don't need to think about kathy like she's doing something yeah you you know but yeah i'm sorry that sucks and it's totally fine because especially because i was pregnant i probably wouldn't have wanted to do anything anyways but it's just like uh well and i've had a couple people uh, mention like hey when you're done being pregnant we should do like a party bus and could go around and like Now that you can drink, you know, we'll go to wineries or whatnot. But I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to plan that. And I don't want to plan that, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So it's just like, okay, well, maybe if I had a best friend, they could, I could tell them. And and it's just like, no, that's fine. I'm good. Like I have, I have people I can call on. I have people I, that can watch my daughter when I need it. I have someone, but I also don't mind like, oh, I'll go to a movie by myself or I'll take myself out to dinner too. So like the level of, uh, and I have people that, hey, let's go to dinner. Okay, great. And I have, you know, my dance mom friends and I have my people from high school and I have, you know, photographers and I have podcasters and I have different levels of friends and friendships and and whatnot but I don't have someone that I could say this is my best friend I mean it's almost uh, uh, I think uh, I am you know oh wow I'm gonna give some unsolicited advice I am okay with that uh, because hold I your butts everybody <laughs> give you advice gonna... all the time so God. it's oh. your turn I think that this is not like 
Oh, th- th- I do not want to say that this is your fault at all, but I think that, or uh, I guess I would make an assumption about you that you would, um, I don't know, I'm trying to phrase it. Not that I'm like trying to say it without sounding like a dick. Normally, that's what I'm doing. But I'm not- <laughs> Just come out with it because <laughs> hemming and hawing is is making it worse. <laughs> I know. I, no, no, no. But that's but that's the thing is like you are the, like the planner. You are the person who takes care of people. And I'm I'm saying that I think your friend like it's like it's our fault. That's what I'm thinking. And I guess I'm trying to think of like why like people in your community community myself included have like failed you basically because if you the fact that you even have that thought is not fair at all. And like the idea of like having one best friend I don't think is necessarily like the the thing because I have I I got I like I call my buddy Kara Fagan who a lot of people if you listen to do by Friday you'll know who she is yeah. just because like she's my best friend but that's like we call each other best friends but also the reason we became friends is literally because our name like our last names were similar <laughs> so we sat next to each other in homeroom like yeah. it was it's the epitome of like and I mean uh, you know luckily it was she's like my platonic wife and like the same like when I met <laughs> Maddie like it was it was pure luck like that's what best friends in childhood are often are yeah and it's like I I do feel like it is our fa- I'm going to say our on behalf of all of your friends like a, a failing of making an assumption that maybe you don't want to be taken care of in a specific way because we don't or at least I don't often think of not necessarily uh, like because party planning and stuff and like all that is emotional labor um yeah. and and i fucking hate doing it uh but <laughs> not when it not when i know that someone will very very much appreciate it which is why when i that i don't know see that's the thing it is it is the failing of other people and i wonder what would happen if or and maybe ooh I'm maybe do you think maybe it, it might be your fault that other people make that assumption because I don't think it is but I'm just curious. Well and in my world like if I don't tell somebody something like this affects me or I'm a you know what I'm feeling nobody can read my mind. I like mm-hmm. I've always had that kind of a relationship in my brain. I was I've never been the type of girl that's like I'm angry at you and you should know why like Mm -hmm, I'm gonna mm -hmm. I'm gonna put it out there I'm gonna tell you so the fact that I haven't told anybody this is on me like I can't expect my friends to like plan something for me in my brain because I they don't know that I want something planned you know yeah that's i mean that's totally true i think and like totally like both of those sides are valid i yeah. and i'm also trying to think of what uh my my some of my other mentors jen and trin of friendshipping go to friendshipping <laughs> uh or do friendship.com.fm i don't know google friendshipping there's nothing <laughs> else we'll put the link in the show notes yeah. don't worry <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's it's a very good show and it's uh another like this podcast it is it's a podcast that's uh, helped me a lot in my adult life in like navigating um not like difficult not difficult relationships but like the everyday good relationships you have but then there's always the thing of like i wish this could be better a little like i don't know and it it seems like you don't want friends to necessarily take care of you because you you have that you have people like you said you have people who you can call on if uh something happens or you need someone to like take care of stuff but you you want friends to like celebrate you and i'm trying like i'm trying to think of i think before i was trying like my hemming and hawing which made you nervous (laughs) it (laughs) was that was what I, i was looking for a better word to then celebrate because it sounds like a little bit like over the top but that's that is the word like you are an amazing yeah. human who should be celebrated and sure like uh, this might be a one-off thing because you know i have to imagine being pregnant on your birthday and just 
I, oh man, pregnant at all. Oh, yes. <laughs> you're so amazing. Human bodies are so amazing, but man, so I, I don't know. Man, you're gonna get like the best fucking. You better get the best fucking birthday party next year. Uh, it's gonna happen yeah. somehow. Yeah, let's hope so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but like, and and I don't. I think I think part of it too is is I have a hard time uh, accepting um, like gifts and and compliments outside of things that I do. So like when you say I'm an amazing human being, I'm just like. Mm -hmm. Just do what I have to do, 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 do type of a reaction, um, because I'm just doing what I, I I need to do, what feels good, what makes me happy. Those types of reactionary things. When really, it's okay to say, "Yeah, I'm fucking awesome." Like I grew a human for someone else. Yeah, that's pretty incredible. Uh, more than I mean, uh, it's. Ah, like <laughs> I can't even think of like a like that's how giving you are and like yes like a surrogacy is like a business transaction and stuff like that sometimes but like you grew a fucking human being <laughs> for other human beings and there are sci-fi books about you because <laughs> because because like because uh, like male science fiction authors uh, like need to create like oh man we're gonna make incubate babies and this is like yeah no we already have this amazing ability yeah. for uh, a lot of people who have been assigned female at birth to just pop things out it's amazing yeah. and terrifying I've yes. had a lot of child uh, feels lately, and I'm, that's why I'm <laughs> peaking so much. That's oh. all good. But also, like, I I enjoy um, complimenting and supporting people. And it's that's something that, yes, it, it is emotional labor, but it's emotional labor that I really, really enjoy. Um, and, for example, friend of the show, Brian Hamilton, just was like... T thank he thanked me for s giving him love and support for something that he was doing at one point and i'm like well mm -hmm. obviously like in my mm -hmm. head yeah i'm gonna take time out i think it was on a weekend or at night or or something but that didn't matter to me because i had a friend that needed something that i could provide mm -hmm. and that was it was reciprocal in that sense of the word, because I was able to support someone and love on them. And I do get it back, but, oh, wow. I <laughs> making me sound like a terrible human being no. <laughs> that I'm like, sometimes I want it in return too. Yeah, no, that's not terrible. And I'm a barely functional human being. And even I know that is like, no, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that statement in any way, shape or form. Like, I, I am, I am mad at the world right now that they, that you feel like that is an expectation, like, or the expectation is that is not something you should want because you are such a natural caregiver and you are not even like asking anything of anybody. Like, well, what I, I guess why, why aren't you asking things of people? Because you, I've, I've seen you be such an amazing, not just like physical caregiver, but emotional caregiver to folks. Is it because you you don't want to ask or have people failed you in the past if you've asked them? That's a really good question. And I'm trying to think and I don't I don't think it was necessarily like, oh, I haven't been supported in the past or I've asked for something that I haven't received so much as I'm I. I don't, I don't know. The tables have turned in this I show. know. What is going on? <laughs> this is the unicorn and the robot now. Man. <laughs> it's like we found the one part of your brain that is just like, uh, like that will need like a password to get into. Apparently. 
and I'm extremely vulnerable right now, and I don't know what to do with myself. Welcome to the other side. <laughs> this sucks. It's so bad. It's bad all the time. <laughs> oh, man. I, a part of me wonders if it's like, can I blame the postpartum stuff? Can I blame the postpartum anxiety for actually thinking about these things that apparently have been on my mind for years because <laughs> uh, I don't like so if someone is like going through and like on Facebook for example and they're tagging someone and saying yay thanks so and so for coming out with me blah 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 and they're local to me and I'm like well why didn't I get invited mm. which is I'm, I'm wondering how like I don't know if it's something, uh, oh gosh, not necessarily something about me or anything like that. This is coming out weird, but like, I want to get invited to things too. Yeah, there's nothing, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. And I, I'm, oh, here's a question. Did you grow up popular? No, no, I wouldn't call myself popular. Like I, I... I had friends, so I wasn't, I wasn't, I was not a loner or anything, but I was definitely not one of the popular kids. Um, when I auditioned or like tried out for the dance team my junior year, um, I, like I was made fun of because I was a cheerleader and at our school, we got booed when we went out to perform. Oh, so like oh, cheerleaders my. were not the cool people. Um, and so when I said I wanted to try out for the dance team instead, um, like I was told I wasn't cool enough to be part of that. Uh, spoiler alert, I made it and I was awesome and I loved it. <laughs> but, but like I, I definitely was on the nerdy side, um, on the less cool side of the school, you know, mm -hmm. the theater nerds and band geeks and and that sort of stuff. I mean, that was my realm. <laughs> <laughs> this is my area of expertise. Yes. Um, <laughs> but maybe it's because I was uh, like, in, in high school, I wasn't so much of a loner, um, only because uh, my high school sort of uh, happened to facilitate a lot of the things I cared about like uh you know theater and, and music and you know being really good at english class <laughs> like that was a good thing to be um but i've never really ex experienced like the fomo like fear of missing out because um i'm more of like an a yomo person like i have the assumption of missing out like i never expect to be included and i'm always always shocked um when anybody wants to do anything with me at all and there's i'm going to have a, a, a human moment and be like no you know what you have you you've got some stuff going on that's okay like some it's okay to to have friends and like hanging out with people and that's something that s i still have to tell myself yeah and i uh also i really just i don't know i just think and again it's not like a pity sort of thing at all for you right now but i just wonder how much of it is you feeling like because you care so much i i don't know do you ever ask like can i hang out i, I don't know yes i do i guess i'm trying to solve this problem and i don't I know, know. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if i'm fixable um but like so for example i'm thinking about um events so like xoxo two years ago um mm -hmm. i was not part a part of the incomparable network yet i had met people at a couple of events and so i knew of them but i i wasn't considered uh, i'm not a cool kid but like yes you are i wasn't i wasn't involved or anything like that and so i i 
Um, on Twitter, for example, Quinn Rose needed a ride from the airport. Okay, I'll come and pick you up. Sweet. So we're standing at the festival talking and I hear Jason Snell at the entrance checking in. Of course, I recognize his voice because it's Jason. And I immediately am like, I'm going to come over and I'm going to talk to you. And so I, I am not afraid. Well, and like at Ool, I... By myself, technically, at the hotel and stuff, I'm going to come over and I'll talk to whoever you are. I'll talk to you. I'll talk to people. Because, like, I, I'm not afraid to, oh, what if they don't like me? Like, that's fine. In in those situations, I'm I'm okay, like, introducing myself and inviting myself along like you're not you're not creepy like yeah. i remember one time you thought like oh god am i one of the people that yes. alex hates because i'm so extroverted but no no good because i never i never want to be the creepy person i never want to be like yes i will come and i will talk to anybody and i'll like stand awkwardly in a corner uh and inter- <laughs> i like to so my my trick at like a conference or an event where I'm by myself and I'm going to join another group of people is I'll go up, I'll wait for a moment, uh, like a pause in the conversation. And I'll be like, hi, I'm Kathy and I'm going to awkwardly join your conversation right now. Okay. Is that okay? If not, that's cool. And like, usually everyone laughs, introduce themselves, and then we talk about whatever. Um, because it is hard, especially like I'd go to these conferences and stuff a lot of times by myself. And so I will know people, but not necessarily like have traveled with somebody. So I'm OK. Just like, hey, let's stand over here and talk. Yeah, I th- it will be a surprise to nobody <laughs> that I don't enjoy doing that. <laughs> but I think it is. I mean that I mean it, it, it's not hard to diagnose why I am like that it's or at least like you know it's it's a self-confidence and like a you know not wanting to be a burden on other people and so I think it's really interesting that you don't find that to be a burden on other people because you're not um but like hanging out in maybe more like you you keep talking about conferences and stuff, but in terms of like daily life stuff, it might not be the case. Yeah, I don't. I have a, a much harder time like messaging someone and saying, hey, do you want to go get lunch? I can't even imagine doing that. <laughs> but <laughs> So I in case you haven't guessed, I'm an extrovert. Um and when working from home, that can be difficult um, to get like human interaction that ex- mm-hmm. like to keep me going. So like I get really excited when I get to go to the grocery store um, or go pick up a prescription or something. And usually if I'm planning something with friends, it has to be multiple weeks in advance. Mm. Um because everyone's schedules are crazy. Uh, The one exception is I do get to see a group of dance moms during my daughter's dance class every week. We go to a local restaurant and just have snacks or a drink or whatever um, for that hour and 15 minutes. So I have a weekly like get together with things, but I really, I really should like plan things things more things like it's it's okay to reach out but no 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 you shouldn't you should say you should say let's go to a place not not plan like yeah like you shouldn't like i i I don't god i man i'm just gonna steal all of jen and trin's hot tips um (laughs) but like uh even well and that's the thing though even being like uh, do you want to get 
do you want to go get lunch is like okay so where do we go to lunch like yeah. is it gonna like is it do they have is it gonna be easy for them to do separate checks is it like do you need reservations like all of those i'm and at like and a lot of those problems can be solved by like oh i'll go to like a panera or whatever you guys have there that like <laughs> you pay separate i don't know um but it is still like a matter there there this and maybe it's this is just the anxious like planner in my brain of like okay there's like 17 different steps in making this happen yeah and i and and maybe you should ask somebody just like hey want to go to lunch let's do what you want to do <laughs> <laughs> and, and and see what happens it could be a disaster but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. The the problem with that is if it is a disaster, I would ne- feel the need to swoop in and fix it. Um I would I would need to like if if and and a lot of my my local friends tend to be more introverted or have anxiety over certain things and I wouldn't want to place that burden on them when I could just do it. You, uh, which I think, uh, yeah, it's not healthy. You say just, and that's like me saying, <laughs> well, I could, uh, like, that. It, it's not like you saying, oh, I could just pick my kid up instead of her taking the butt. Like, it's a, di- I don't, like, I don't know. It seems so, uh, like, I don't. Uh, I you know what I'm asking you now to the to take you to lunch in Portland, and I'm going to figure out all the details, and I'm gonna or I'm gonna get someone else to do, figure out all the details. <laughs> but this is, I mean, you know, in I, a big part of my job is is planning things. So yeah. in port in Portland, I'm gonna organize some sort of lunch, and you're not going to even think about it. You're just gonna show up, and it's not gonna be an awkward thing. You're you're going to be in the circle because you are a cool kid and we're gonna be like everybody let's have lunch and i and and this might be a practice in me well i'm actually fine at like pushing people around when it's when it's for the benefit of the group (laughs) and to keep things organized in a straight line and everything and like uh you know in in a nice tidy everyone's happy okay okay good but you but not I could not do that all of the time and you should not always have to do that. Like, yeah, you should just sit back and, Oh, and now you could have weed if you want. Well, you can always have weed. I forget. Yeah. You're on the good part of the <laughs> I'm world. I'm uh, yeah. You can always, um, but you can drink now too. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, when we hang out in two weeks, ah! Oh my God, it's so soon. It is really soon. It feels like, Okay, September. That's a really long time from now. And yet it's August 21st when we're recording this. And it's Mm -hmm. really not that far to September. Oh, not at all. That's the one thing I've learned in like in event planning and even in like, well, preparing for anything and meeting or podcast, like, uh, uh, like I still think that like life is short is a cliche because it's really fucking long. Uh, and, <laughs> and like a time does feel like very, very long, but, yeah. uh, to, to, this is, I swear I'm not high now. I don't know <laughs> where I'm going with this, <laughs> but in terms of like traveling, I'm always like, Oh, I don't need to deal with this until later. And then I forget. Oh yeah. Yeah, the second you put this off, the flight gets like one dollar more expensive <laughs> for <Right>. every minute. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. But and which is why I'm excited because I keep thinking like, OK, this is uh, and this is again, like I one thing I really like about at first I thought it was annoying or like I thought it would annoy people and maybe it does. But whatever. Fuck them. Um, <laughs> like that. We have conversations that we know will definitely lead to other conversations. Yeah. Um, but the thing I realized is I always need to have something else on the docket. Like I'm very, very excited for XOXO. But then right after XOXO, there's something I'm going to be like, there's another trip that I'm planning. And I wonder if that's healthy. I totally think so, because you want to have something to look forward to outside of the normal day to day doldrums. Because I mean, after XOXO, 
in a couple weeks after that, I'm going to Disney World. Like, oh, fuck you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> and it's like, okay. And then after that, uh, I don't know what is next. And that's okay because I have two things lined up before then. Oh, my gosh. But I haven't traveled in a while. It's been a, it's hasn't, I haven't, like, I'm trying to think. Release notes, I think, was the last time I traveled, unless PodCon was after that. I don't even know. PodCon was after that, yeah. Was it after that? Okay, so PodCon. Because it was Christmas. Yeah, That's yeah, right. yeah. So PodCon was the last time I did really anything, uh, and that was, what, nine months ago? Yeah, it was, yeah, and the only, <laughs> and I know that because <laughs> Christmas, that's, I, I, I'm just realizing that actually this is one of the facets of myself that maybe is healthy, that I'm always trying to be, not that I don't like my daily life, uh, I really like my life, I just don't like myself, um, and so I'm like, even if there was nothing, there'd still be Christmas every year. Yes. Like, there'd still be, even if there was no Christmas, even even if the world, like, was, even if we have the apocalypse, like, there's still snow. And I, <laughs> maybe it's part of me being just an inherently uh, sad like and not not everybody who is mentally ill needs to be sad. Like th- those are like what I'm talking about now is two different things. I think. Um, and I'm just hopefully maybe this is a healthy way that i cope with sadness of like okay you are going to get through this day and because guess what you get to see all of your good friends in two weeks and oh yeah you get to like play in the snow with your cat and uh, we'll get to that conversation again (laughs) later yeah i think i think being able to look forward to something is healthy but you shouldn't always have to be the one planning the things to look forward to yeah yeah this is i uh, i have to go uh my my spouse is i well i hope they're still alive i don't know i haven't heard from them in a while uh maybe i who knows maybe, maybe they muted, muted their muted <laughs> <laughs> the the funny thing is, uh, i guess well i guess this will also explain i still don't know if this was a mistake on ios 12's part but i'm i'm pretty sure this one is is me but i really use my phone like a fidget toy like as we've been talking i've just been pulling um like the siri thing up and down i've been uh you nobody needs to actually ever qu- not ever quit you you usually don't need to quit ios apps but i just like scrolling and quitting them yeah. even though i know it takes up more battery and it's just like a fun little fidget toy um and i like it when i get notifications because i ignore them and just sweep them up uh <laughs> <laughs> everything bounces and I don't need to pay attention uh, oh no they haven't texted me good oh uh, uh, wait nope nope my phone is frozen okay yeah no we'll see what <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I muted them but I don't have a phone so uh, we'll, Sweet. I, I should go explore the office and see if anybody is still here yeah that's a good idea uh, yeah, but that's also why there is no Animoji video this week. Yay! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that was an interesting thing because I kind of offhandedly was like, hey, can we not do this this time? Because my phone's just been real weird. Uh, I got back on the developer beta because I really <sighs> wanted to. I know. I really want to try the shortcut. Anyway. Uh, <sighs> But I, yeah, yeah. And, and, but then I realized, oh, holy shit, this was causing me a huge ton of stress. And, yeah. uh, so we'll get, but we'll get back to that once iOS 12 is, solid. is actually released and I stop breaking my phone. Yeah, please don't break your phone. Well, it's in great condition. It's a <laughs> very pretty, you know, it's, it's a wonderful paperweight. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to get very Seinfeld. I'm pretty sure this is a bit that like Seinfeld did, but I still don't understand paperweights. I, why, who is, who, why, why? Anyway. Executives that had huge piles of paper that also like opened the windows or had fans. Was it, was it like a sign of status? Like, ah, I need something to hold down my papers yes. because my corner office and I've got my corner office. So I open all my windows. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I think this is, well, I guess I'm going on Wikipedia tonight. <sighs> <sighs> 